She's not what you'd expect. She's tough and feisty, but gentle and tender. She makes millions and gives millions to the poor. She cries, she laughs, she teaches, she comforts. This is the Danny Johnson Show. The first wealth is health. That is a quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson, a guy who's like been dead for a really long time. He was a very famous American poet who, who penned incredible wise words. And I, and I saw this today and I was like, wow, isn't that so true? The first wealth is health. Hi, I'm Danny Johnson. Welcome to The Danny Johnson Show, the show that is gripping you, girding you, guiding you into a more successful life in all areas of your life. This is the show where we go toe to toe with the status quo of success and why. Because the status quo of success is trying to tell you that sacrificing your health for money is appropriate and it's needed and it's necessary. And I'm here to tell you the truth. Been there, done that giant mistake, not worth it. Not worth it. You can never get your health back. You can't. What you've lost in stress, what you've lost in bad eating, what you've lost in sleep, you can never get that back. Oh, you can certainly put yourself in a kind of a lifestyle that causes you to have to constantly be in need of a miracle, or you can be wise with what you put in your family and your own body that will help you to lead a better, healthier, successful life. And I know that's what you want. That's why you join us here every single day on The Danny Johnson Show. There are things you're putting in your body that are hurting your future. There are things that you're putting inside of your mouth and your children's mouth that is hurting your earning potential and hurting their earning potential, hurting their ability to actually create wealth. Today, we've got people just with stacked on not only credit cards bills, but medical bills. I have watched medical bills hurt and nearly destroy financially families all across the globe. But that doesn't have to be you. We have to be wise with what we do with our bodies and wisdom will lead you to success. You may have heard so many different opinions, especially on social media. This new trend that's rising up that is anti-GMO, only eat organic, even this whole raw food movement that is going on cookbook after cookbook, cooking show after cooking show, cooking blog after cooking blog. And at the same time, we have more diseases today than we've ever had. I don't know if you noticed that, but autism was something that I never even heard of until I saw the movie Rain Man. (laughs) That was two decades ago. So sad. Okay. So, I mean, that word, I never even heard it. I didn't even know what it meant. And then all all of a sudden, we have my grandchildren's generation. There's autistic kids all over the place. It's very common today. Something has changed, friend. Now, all of a sudden, right? When I was growing up, I didn't know a single person who had dairy. uh, What do you call that? Allergies to dairy. They were lactose, lactose, lactose intolerant. (laughs) <laughs> okay. Okay. And, and not to mention the glu- gluten intolerance. <laughs> There's so many people with all kinds of food allergies and food, food, food intolerance issues today. Seems like such a prison. So many health problems, mental issues, pain in the body. And it all boils down to this. All boils down to this. I'm so excited to be talking to you about this today. I really am. I'm going to tell you a number of reasons why. Uh, Because I've been getting clobbered over the head with this topic, actually. And so I'm excited to talk to you about it. But I first was introduced to a different way of living, eating, two and a half decades ago. And I'm really grateful for that. And I'm going to tell you why I'm grateful. I grew up in a household where we were on welfare until I was about 12 years old. And then uh, we we no longer were on welfare, but we still were living uh, very, very, uh, we didn't have a lot of money. And then when I was 14, there was a lot of money in our household. And what happened was is my mom broke her neck when I was 11. She got her settlement when I was 14. They moved into a house. Now they went from, you know, nasty, cheap food, to steaks every night for dinner and, um, you know, Wonder Bread and margarine and garlic salt for dinner when I was most of my childhood to then, you know, spaghetti and sausage and, you know, just, you know, they were just piling on the food like crazy. No small wonder they both got enormous. My parents were enormous, not my biological father, but the man that raised me. And uh, sodas in the house all the time and all kinds of candy bars and ice cream and just, I mean, it, it was like, woo. You know, tons of food in the pantry, the fridge, and the freezer. And then we were eating out all the time. No small wonder that there was a major 
weight problem in the household after welfare to that. So anyway, we have a family. My my bloodline has serious health problems, heart disease. Okay, I, uh, I've lost seven cousins under the age of 40, 40 on down to 21. My sister died at 21 years old. Um, most of these deaths were caused by heart attacks and heart attacks induced by drugs, bad lifestyle, and, and poor uh, poor habits of taking care of the body, not understanding the the our job. We actually have a physical job of taking care of our physical bodies. And when we don't take care of it, it, it begins to break down. So I was introduced to the health industry 20 about 24 years ago. So grateful for that because I did have a fear of dying young, just like the rest of my family, or ending up with cancer, like my aunt died of cancer at 50, or having rheumatoid arthritis like my grandmother had, okay, or having heart disease like everybody else in the family has. And so I really started to study and look at different ways to not have those same issues and hello, back issues. Oh gosh, everybody had back surgery in our family. So it was like, and not to mention everyone on medications, you know, taking 15 different medications every day just to stay alive. That's not the life that I want to have. I know it's not the life you want to have. And just last night, we gathered together. We gather together every Tuesday night, actually, to pray for people. Uh, and we pray for you. We pray for our families. We pray for our clients. We pray for we pray for our um, clients' businesses. We pray for everyone's finances, their health, all of this stuff. And we put up on Facebook that we had a request uh, that we were going to be praying. And I put a picture up of all of us gathered together, and we were getting ready to pray. And we we're going to commit like an hour and a half, two hours to pray for everybody. And man, that's like, we're sweating, you know, because we're just really praying. We believe in prayer. We believe in the power of it. I couldn't believe how many requests came in for health. It was the number one request that came in. And every request that came in, we jumped on it. And, and individually, all of us were praying for different people out loud, uh, begging God to heal, begging God to bring, um, you know, guidance for those who were asking for it. But there was a lot of cancer uh, people, I mean, people that were suffering with cancer or friends of theirs that were suffering from cancer, some people that were in ICU. I mean, there was so much health, so much physical pain that was inside of those people. And I thought, gosh, man, we need to do a better job of guiding people in this conversation of health and our responsibility of taking care of our bodies and making wise choices. I can go on and on and on about this, okay? Recently, I, I had my blood work done and I had blood uh, analyzed by a specialist that can tell you if you have bacteria in your blood, fungus in your blood, you know, ailments in your blood, pain that's going on in your body that actually your blood actually shows. It was an, a remarkable study that was done. And I'm in the process of, you know, making some corrections with some things, you know, small little things, which I was so excited at my age to have like almost nothing wrong with me, which was like awesome. And that's because I've taken really good care of myself for the last 24 years due to the knowledge that's out there about health. So today, listen, if you want long lasting success, you got to prepare yourself for the race. Because you can be smarter than Einstein and have poor health and your brains are going to serve you no good at all. You could be an incredible salesperson, but your health keeps you in bed. You could be an inventor and you could change the world like Steve Jobs did. And Steve Jobs' life was cut short because of his health. Okay, so you, you have a destiny and your destiny is to live a long healthy life, not a short, pain-filled, pill-filled life. Do you understand? So let's dive deep into this. So if you've seen posts about GMOs and organics and stuff like that, maybe you don't know anything about it and you're probably wondering what is all of this about? Is this just a fad or is this some truth to, for this? I'm not going to share all of my opinions today unless there is time for that. But what I want to do is I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. How do you see this? Is this just a trend, a, a way for people to make money? Or is there some truth to, to living a non-GMO life? Those genetically modified organisms that the government has allowed to go into our foods, but the French government will not allow that to go into their food. Israel will not allow GMOs in their food. Various countries all over Europe will not, in the Mediterranean, will not allow these genetically modified substances in the food. Let me give you an example. There's cockroach DNA in your corn. Yep, your popcorn, your frozen corn, your ears of corn, your canned corn. If it is not organic and non-GMO, cockroach DNA is in there. Why? Because they found that if they put, they, they splice cockroach DNA into the corn, that it will resist bugs. So they say, so rather than putting the, the bug repellent, as much bug repellent on the food itself, we're going to put the bug repellent in the food, and now you're eating cockroach DNA. Ugh, that's gross. 
Thus has come all of these health issues in our kids and diseases and allergies that have happened. And I believe it's related to the food because we are what we eat. Enough for me. I want to hear from you. So going over to the phones, we've got Angela Holmes from Janesville, Wisconsin. Angela, welcome to the Danny Johnson Show. What is your thoughts and opinion concerning food, the food quality today, and how you're eating? Hi, Danny Johnson. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me on today. Absolutely. So, um, our family has had quite a health journey, and it um, you know it probably started earlier in my childhood without me really realizing it, eating the standard American diet, and um, I've always exercised and um, been fairly active, but you can't exercise your way out of a bad diet, um, mm-hmm. although exercise is good for you. Mm-hmm. Um, at the age of 21, I was diagnosed with colitis. What? Thought, That's yeah, like an old person's what? disease. That's not a yeah, 21-year-old uh, disease. That's an old person's disease. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so I got that diagnosis at 21, and... Um, I thought, well, that's that's going to be my disease. You know, this is what I'll, this is my uh, wow. Your lot in life. life for my life. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Well, then I got pregnant. Um, my husband and I were expecting my first, and I got diagnosed hypothyroid. And I thought, well, of course, my whole family has hypothyroid. It's <sighs> it's nothing I really thought about. I actually didn't even realize that it was also autoimmune, as colitis is. So I started taking my my levothyroxine and on with my life. My pregnancies were hard. I had two hard pregnancies. I didn't know, you know, bed rest and modified bed rest. And Mm -hmm. and why is it so hard for me to carry, you know, Mm -hmm. my children? Why Mm -hmm. is this difficult? And um, after I had my second, um, I have two children. After I had my second, my son, I I wasn't springing back. Well, I have two kids. They're 11 and a half. They're 11 months, two weeks apart. Of course Boy, I'm tired. Geez. You know, <laughs> um, I kept put, put, putting it off. You know, you don't go to the doctor when, mm-hmm. you know, you're, you're a busy new mom. And, you yes. know, so um, I thought, well, maybe my colitis is acting up and um, this and that, this and that. So uh, it escalated. And I eventually ended up in the emergency room, um, stomach pain one night. And I couldn't get it to subside and I had taken some Tylenol and it was just unbearable and then I took ibuprofen and I thought it's not touching it and my husband um, was trying to help me through the pain and he said you have to go to the hospital man that is such a very very scary thing to do too right and look what we do we instantly like oh my stomach hurts let me get the Tylenol let me get the Advil let me have some Pepto-Bismol let me take some antacids do you know what I mean we start reaching for all of these drugs which are not helping the situation but could be hurting it we'll continue to hear more about Angela's story right after this stay right here for more of the Danny Johnson show friend, you know me. You know how passionate I am about my faith and the land of Israel. I'm so excited to tell you about something directly from the Holy Land. A good friend in Israel has teamed up with a good friend here in the U.S. to bring an incredible product that harnesses the healing power of the Dead Sea. Have you heard about Mud Zero? Face it, we may not like to talk about it, but some of us need help with removing unwanted hair, especially in unwanted places. Mud Zero is a solution for all skin types for men and women. Rub the mask on your skin, let it sit for five minutes, wipe it off, and you have smooth skin without the irritation. Then follow it up with a Depi lotion daily to reduce hair growth by up to 50%. Best of all, you can feel good knowing that over 10% of the profits goes directly to King's Ransom to feed the orphan and the widow. Go right now to MudZero.com and take advantage of an introductory offer they've created just for us. MudZero.com. Imagine living in a decrepit, unsafe hovel made of waste material on top of old mining tunnels that could explode and sink your home at any moment. Imagine no water to drink, no safe place to raise your children, no food for your starving baby. Imagine that your kids can't learn to read because they have to work to support the family instead of going to school. Could you imagine living in that kind of fear and hopelessness? This is exactly what families are dealing with in the poverty-stricken village of Santa Pancha, Nicaragua. These families can barely meet their basic food, water, and housing needs. 
We are transforming that village. Be a part of this miracle. I want you to go to the website now and learn how you can help. Go to kingsransom.org and click on Santa Pancha. There you can join with other warriors against poverty and help bring a miraculous transformation to Santa Pancha. That's kingsransom.org, kingsransom.org. The way you look at things is about to change. It's the Danny Johnson Show. There you have a little bit of pain, so you reach for the bottle, right? Yeah, the bottle of Tylenol. It seems to be like it's, you know, it's harmless, right? Everybody does it. Oh, you're diagnosed with this disease. Oh, my mom had that, so, you know, I guess this is what it's going to be. Oh, you know, my dad had that other thing, so, I, you know, this is what we just accept. Listen, success is about not accepting everybody else's pain. It's about not accepting everybody else's ailments. There's always another way. There's always another answer. There's always another plan that you can follow. You don't have to accept and take on the family's health issues and just reach for the same habits that they did. Listen, I love what Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote a long time ago. The first wealth is health. Health is a choice. It is. Now, ah, Danny, I was born with this, this, and that. You want me to go through the list of things that I was born with with you? No, you don't. I've had so many healings happen in my body because I refuse, refuse to allow the birth defects that I was born with, which I was born with many, <laughs> many, okay? <laughs> One almost took my life majorly, okay? Um, but the bottom line is, is I refuse to live under what that is. And you don't have to either. Joining me right now is Angela Holmes. There she was, just like, you know, every other person out there. Oh, you got this problem. Okay, well, I take that drug. And you got this problem. Okay, I take that drug. I'm going to have that problem too. Well, now she's in the emergency room. What happened next, Angela? The running a bunch of tests. My liver enzymes are through the roof. They can't figure out what's going on. Um, they think I might have appendicitis. And then they say they, are, they uh, run some tests some more tests, and they say, you know, we're sending you home. Um, maybe it's mono. Well, within a couple of weeks, I wasn't walking by the end of the day. And I thought, well, I've never heard of this. So, you know, someone with mono not walking, something else must be going on. I call again, and it ends up, um, well, I get a basic diagnosis of mixed connective tissue disease. It's the overlap of multiple autoimmune conditions. So I am thinking, what? This is crazy. I mean, you can't just slap a label on me, say I have everything. I mean, I have colitis, hypothyroid, and now this mixed connective tissue. Is this, what is this? So I go for a second opinions, and things got kind of narrowed down. I was diagnosed with lupus, SLE, systemic lupus, and um, Sodrin's Raynaud's, and um, along with my uh, microscopic colitis and my hypothyroid. And that was became my um, focus with lupus being my primary um, diagnosis and focus with treatment. So I didn't uh, respond wow. to traditional uh, treatments, Plaquenil and things like that. I ended up on chemotherapy and oh my gosh. for a few years. And I was taking them in pill form, but they were Jeez. becoming, I was becoming less and less responsive. Wow. You know? And because those chemotherapy drugs can actually cause cancer, I had yes. to have keys and I'd get lymph nodes that would be of concern. So they would have to do scans to make sure, okay, no, it's not lymphoma. Keep going with treatment. My gosh, and your entire crazy. life was consumed with your health. Yes, yes. And I kept thinking, this can't be it. This just cannot be all there is. All right, so this what did you do? What, what was the solution? How are you living today? Okay, well, I had a total change, but that change didn't come until my son, who, um, who's now 10, but really uh, peaked at the the worst point of his health at the age of eight. Oh, so now and, your son is having health problems. Yes. And, you know, uh, so that's so, my focus was shifting. My focus for yeah. my health, even though it was going downhill, was, you know, you know, whatever. When your son, when your child, when you're losing your child. and So and, was this yeah. an allergy? Was this a food allergy that was causing all of this? Yeah. See, this is, this is it. What I'm at, my son's going to a children's hospital. We're going from specialist to specialist. They can't figure it out. Fevers, vomiting, joint pain, night sweats all this stuff going on, and I get a call from my rheumatologist. He ran another panel because my, he was having trouble controlling lupus things, and he just threw a celiac blood test on there, and he said, Angie, your numbers are off the charts. Quit eating gluten, and I thought, whatever. Gosh. But, yes. So gluten. It out. Wheat. Yes, gluten, wheat. Wheat so was causing all of this in your body. Partly. That was the biggest 
that it had inspired me to start, you know, chatting Looking. about it on Peacefully Gluten Free. But yep. I, I uh, talked to my um, my son's specialist, and you know, they they just really weren't uh, doing a lot. I said, well, he has a first degree relative, me, with celiac. Should he be tested? Yes. Well, I didn't test, and I started doing some research when I was trying to figure out what I could eat, and I thought, you've got to be kidding me. This can cause his symptoms. Yep. I took him off flu, and he started to improve. Yeah, I've seen that, by the way, Angela, I've seen it so many times. We have relatives that had the same exact thing happen to them. All of these health issues and all it was, stop eating bread. Stop eating pasta. Start, stop eating all wheat anything. You have an allergy to it. And there's a reason for that, by the way. The wheat that we eat today is not the wheat that first was on this earth at all. We've modified it and it's hurting and killing our bodies. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more right after this. Did you know you can see Danny Johnson live and in person? Go to dannyjohnson.com and find out about our next live event. First steps to success, register today. Call 866-760-8255 or go to dannyjohnson.com forward slash FSTS. This is your chance. This is your shot. Get your copy of War on Debt right now. There's one waiting for you that has your family's name on it. And inside that package is freedom. Your freedom, your family's freedom is on the inside of that package. All you have to do is open it up, press play, and start applying what I teach you in this program. 888-757-8880. You and I are going to help your family become completely debt-free in the next five to seven years. Just imagine how that's going to feel. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Is it possible that you're putting something in your children's body every single day that could be hurting them and causing disease to form inside of them, weakening them? Yes, it is possible. We see it, we hear about it all the time. It's happened in our family, my husband's cousins, where they were dying, they didn't know, but man, they had all kinds of health issues. And then bam, turns out that they were allergic to gluten. Here are all these different diseases that can come from all of one food and why? Because our government has allowed genetically modified foods, organisms into our homes, into our bodies, but the French government will not allow their citizens to eat that. Israel will not allow their citizens to eat that, as well as many other Mediterranean and European countries will not allow GMOs to come from the United States to get ingested by their citizens and why? Because this food that has been genetically modified is hurting the population in the United States of America and other populations where they are spreading this stuff. We just finished hearing from Angela that here, her and her son diagnosed with all these terrible things. And one of the major links was that they needed to eat gluten-free. All these tests, the medical bills. Angela, I'm so sorry. I got to get onto another caller, but listen to me. How much money was spent in all of these tests, in all of these diagnoses that was all linked to what you were putting in your mouth? Oh my gosh, thousands. thousands Tens of thousands of dollars. How many yeah. hours? How much stress? How much worry? How much loss of sleep? And now simply not even knowing you're putting food in your son's body that is hurting him. Well, you're told, eat your wheat, eat your wheat, eat your wheat, you know? A um, hundred years ago, that was good for us. Fifty years ago, even 25 yeah. years ago, that was fine. But since they have modified that seed, they modified the, the wheat to have it massively produce better and faster not caring about the fact that our bodies know not what to do with it. Doesn't know what to do with it. It can't process it. Just like our bodies can't process all of the chemicals and the dyes and the preservatives that are put in the food, the hormones, the injections that are put in the, in the chicken, that a chicken goes from an egg to your refrigerator in 30 days. I'm saying egg to a full grown chicken, cut up, packaged at the store, in a truck, to the store, in your car, to the house, and then you cook it 30 days. 30 days. We have got to be wise. Wise. We could be killing our children. We could be killing ourselves. And because we live in this crazy society that just says, take a drug for it, we just accept it. This is what you just heard from Angela. We just accept it. Oh, it's infuriating to me. Absolutely infuriating. We've got Shelly uh, Ching from Kailua, Kona, Hawaii. Those are my old stomping grounds, woman. <laughs> Welcome. Awesome. Hi, Danny. Hi. Thank you for having me. Oh, my gosh. I first listened to your introduction, and I'm going, amen, yeah, right on. <laughs> and then I'm listening to the other young lady who was just talking, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Um, you know, the cockroaches and the corn. Kind of, they're just, they, we have to 
to label our food. Yes. We have to, have to, have to have the choice. Yep. And if we can't, if we don't know, we can't have the choice. No. Nope. My story was about 10 years ago. I was making 40000 a year and a single mom, still had two kids in school. Um, and I thought I had arrived, even though I was just in survival mode. But I really loved my job. Mm -hmm. And I had a really bad cold, and I knew I had the next two days off, so I needed to get on antibiotics. So I went to my doctor to get my antibiotics so I could get back to my work schedule. And while I was in there, and she's writing up the script, that I says, oh, it's so funny. My head is so full of snot that one of my eyes, it's like somebody pulled the shade down. Everything was black. Everywhere as I looked, half (laughs) was all black and she was like what what immediately starts looking at my eye and then sent me to this eye specialist nobody's telling me what's going on well within three days i was totally blind in that eye oh my gosh shelly yeah and the pain that i was experiencing now it wasn't just a head full of snot it was literally feeling like i could just pull my eyeball out oh my gosh feel much better so long story short um I got sent to a rheumatologist, and I had MRIs done and blah, blah, blah. I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Oh, my gosh. Now, that was a really big word, and um, what I was most concerned with is getting back to work, but it was kind of hard to wear a pirate patch when I was dealing with celebrities and selling high-end jewelry and looking like a pirate. That just wouldn't float where I work. So why it looks with my eye, and they call it optical neuritis. So I focused my education on my eyeball, and I really didn't pay attention to multiple sclerosis. I focused on optical neuritis. And yay, my eye has peaked at its worst, and it will probably, if my nerves heal, because what it was is my you have your eyeball and you have your brain, and then there's a bunch of nerves that connect it. My eyeball was fine, but when it was sending the message to my brain, Mm -hmm. multiple sclerosis is like hyperactive immune system had eaten the myelin sheath off my nerve and exposed my nerves. So the messages going to my brain and coming back were getting kind of messed up. So that's why my vision was going all over the place. Wow. So, um... The doctor wanted me, he gave me a list of three different medicines and says, here, research this, because he knew I was on the Internet Googling everything. He says, research these. Next appointment, we'll make a decision. Well, the first thing I'm reading is these are all self-injecting. Uh, excuse me, I don't do needles. Wow. <laughs> and I'm definitely not going to be poking myself. So that was the first negative check. The second was, wait a minute, there is no cure for what I have, so what is this medicine? I, I'm not a guinea pig, thank you very much. Nice one. But that's one. what I derived from it, was all experimental, yeah. that if it worked, wow. and possibly what it would, should Boy, good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, within six months, I stopped going to the doctor and decided to sweep my MS under the rug and give it to God. Okay, God, if this is a thorn in my side, so be it. But I need to get back to work. The vision <laughs> is getting a little bit better. Um, blah, 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 blah. Let's fast forward the next five years. Major, I lost my mom, lost that job as a consequence. I kind of broke down at work. Mm. Um, my boyfriend broke up. Um, my eldest son got arrested. Mm. Um, and I lost my home. Mm. All within, within six months. And I... I cracked. Yeah. I, as a, um, I had raised my three, three of my four children. I raised on my own yeah. with no father involved, and and I guess us women we tend to carry the world on our back. Yeah, and that was my my breaking point. Yep, was okay. Motions, okay. Anyways, um, I my so MS, now tell me about your health now. What did you change the oh, way you're eating? What? Oh, where are you today? Okay, well. The MS, this last flare, literally affected my cognitive executive functions where 
If I would have taken the next batch of medicines they wanted me to do, I would be a homeless bag lady walking the streets talking to herself. Wow. I declined, I declined that batch. Good job. Yeah, I'm not all those things. I'm grieving. Thank you very much. Wow. And so I decided there's got to be another way. And it started with me laying flat on my back before God the week before I was being having to lose my home, trying to figure out what to do with my kids not making very good decisions, but I knew that I knew in my heart that God was there. Yeah. And just one thing that led after another. So after spending six months sleeping in my car and literally eating raw spam out of a can, and oh. don't, I don't recommend that to anybody that's no. really nasty. <laughs> no. My, my, it, it, it really, it's I like so my gross. spam and poi, but not raw out of a can. Oh my um, I, I, my children were being passed around to different homes because I did not want to get them in the system. Praise God that that worked out. Wow. But I, my, my car became my prayer closet. Yep. And it's, it's given me a new perspective of people yes. that Amen. I used to ignore before. So again, how and is your health today? My health today is fabulous, girlfriend. The only thing that I take is D3. <laughs> That's a vitamin supplement. I know. I'm 56 years old, and people, when I tell them that, they go, really? You look like you're maybe 40. Wow. And And MS will will majorly age somebody. I have not bought a loaf of bread in over two years. Mm -hmm. My youngest daughter is now in the mainland going to college, so it's just me and my kitty cat. So it is easier to focus on just my diet, what's in front of me, my my. But so you've corrected eat, all of all these bad time. ailments. You've corrected all these bad ailments with proper nutrition, better nutrition, watching what you're putting in your body, letting food be the medicine and supplementing your diet with what you are lacking. And now your health is awesome. I can't tell you how many thousands of times I've heard stories just like that. I've heard one of the best actually came from a doctor and said, if you want to live a long life, never go to the doctor. That was a doctor. Never go to the doctor. Never go to a hospital. Those systems are designed to shorten your life and use you as a guinea pig. That came from a doctor. Isn't that crazy? I heard that 20 years ago. Made my jaw hit the floor going, I think he might be giving some pretty pretty good advice. We've kind of followed through with that advice. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more right after this. Stay right here for more of The Danny Johnson Show. I'm so blessed that I found what is in Grooming the Next Generation for Success. This is a book that is being taught in universities around the world. It's been noted as the best book on parenting that has ever been written. Crazy, if you ask me. But the point is that this thing gets results. Get your copy today, 888-757-8880. Again, that's 888-757-8880. Or go to dannyjohnson.com. That's D-A-N-I johnson.com. Get your copy today. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Are we causing our own health problems? I'm telling you, I think we are. In most cases, we are causing our own health problems. Why? Ignorance. Straight up, friend. Straight up ignorance. Ignorance with where? Part of it is is that some of us take on our parents' health problems. I know I did that, right? I had so many of my family members die of heart disease. So I just knew I was going to die at 39 because that was like the average age of the deaths that happened in our family. The average age. Can you believe that? That's sick. And so I thought, I know I'm going to die of a heart attack, just like Uncle Michael, just like my cousin uh, John, you know. And then sure enough, I have other cousins that took that on too. And at 42 years old, I lost two cousins. They were 42 years old. Within two years of each other, bam. And they identify with the same thing. So part of it is that life and death is in the power of the tongue. It really is. And when we take on the habits of our family that died young or that take pills every day just to stay alive, we then walk in their same health problems. So that's one area, ignorance. We don't have to. We don't have to walk in that. You do not have to eat like they do. You don't have to live like they do. And you don't have to think like they do. And you know, part of being successful, you got to be healthy. You got to be healthy. If you don't have health, you will not create wealth, period, end of story. Okay. The second place of ignorance is the food that we're putting in our mouths. Food that we're putting in our mouths not researching those things. Third, ignorantly just accepting all of these different diagnoses and just going, oh, all right, that's it. Let me have that drug. Oh, I'll take that drug too. Okay, I'll take that drug too. 
You have a choice and you can do research. Joining me right now is Val Coates uh, from Fort Hood, Texas. Concerning this conversation is, are we polluting our bodies without even knowing it? And are we polluting our kids' bodies without knowing it? Val, what say you to that? Oh, wow. These last few uh, testimonies, those are crazy. Aren't they? Like, so young with so many health issues. Um, but, yeah, I think we are. Um, we're pretty careful and have been careful for a while with the wheat. I know yeah. for a couple of years ago, I never was diagnosed with anything, but it started making me feel icky. If I, if I eat it, I just puff up immediately my joints hurt. So. Val, I know. Val. <laughs> right, right when you said that, I seriously saw the Pillsbury Dome and I saw this skinny, beautiful woman and then poof. <laughs> thanks, exactly, thanks for the mental exactly. cartoon. It went in my head when you said yeah, that. Like the, the puffy belly. Yes, totally. Exactly. And what about the, I don't know how old you are, but when you get to my age, uh, there's things that happen underneath your eyelids. <laughs> Yeah, Hi. we're the same. We are really close to the same age, Danny. So, <laughs> yes. um, so what really concerns me ten years ago when I started digging around into the research of this yeah. was GMOs and Terminator technology and what that does, and the impact that'll have for generations to come. Yes, it's changing our DNA. Can, yep. can can literally kill other crops yep. if you don't have any seeds for next year. Yep. You know, what's that going to do? And then I think I commented um, on that thread, you know, we're mixing kingdoms with kingdoms. Yeah. And we we are never designed for that. Nope. <laughs> that kind of... That kind of freaks me out. You know what, Val? It kind of takes me to here. I'm going to kind of step on the edge of the wild side for just a minute. You know, the Bible gives us... Oh, yeah. The Bible gives us exactly how we are supposed to eat. And that was written for that... Well, it was spoken 4,000 years ago, 1,000 later, years later than, it, than they penned it. But it was all spoken word from one generation to the next. And so God gave specific food laws specific mm -hmm. food laws. And these food laws were to keep the Israelites healthy, strong, mentally, emotionally, physically strong, and to keep their seed strong for generations to come. Now, here we have mm -hmm. this tiny little nation that never even had their own land until 1948. They were scattered all over the earth, just as the Bible said, but they kept these food laws. They kept these health laws that have, has sustained them. And you know, they are the most successful uh, heritage on the planet. Yeah. And healthy, really, really healthy people. And so even though like, especially, especially people who are Christians, are like, you know, what well, Paul said, that's one guy that said, but we have thousands and thousands of years of proof that eating kosher has helped to sustain a bloodline. What happened right. to the Hivites? What happened to the Canaanites? What happened to the whoever the other ites were? They're gone. They're dead. They're they're over. It's gone, right? And so here I ate pork for a really long time, okay? I really did. I it's my favorite meat. It's cheap. It tastes so good. Okay? Then I heard this story that pigs don't sweat, which means that they do not have their Oh, look at you. you. You didn't know that. Okay. So bacon. There goes the bacon. That, okay. So you squeeze a foot of a pig. And mind you, people eat pickled pig's feet. It is pus that comes out of their skin. You see, our skin is supposed to sweat. We get rid of toxins when we sweat. Animals are supposed to sweat. They get rid of toxins that are inside of their bodies. But pigs do not rid their bodies of mm -hmm. toxins. They are one big pile of toxic waste. But it tastes so good. Italian no, sausage, and they're, right? They're littered. They're just full of parasites. They are. They're, they are. Their meat is full of parasites. And so we end up with parasites in our body. And parasites cause all kinds of health problems inside of our mm -hmm. bodies. And so I stopped eating pork a few years ago. It was not only a biblical conviction, but it was also a physical health co uh, conviction that happened. And then I kind of broke it. I felt the, the release from it. And now I'm right back on it. Like, I'm not putting parasites in my body willfully. 
Parasites. Most of our nation is filled with parasites and they don't even know it. And yet here's the antibiotics for the parasite that is in your nose that is causing pus to come out of your nose. You call that pus snot. What about the coagulation in your throat? Ugh, you're constantly yeah. having a, you know, this congestion in your throat and you're coughing up a, I'm so sorry to say this, but a loogie. That's what we call it in our house. <laughs> okay. You got you this little, ugh, you know, whatever, a chewy. You know, we, we got this thing in our throat and it's been proved to be parasites. I have a friend and again, I've been a part of the health industry for 24 years. I have a friend who was diagnosed with a brain, uh, brain tumor, okay? They get in, they open his brain, and it was a huge parasite. Huge worm that had wrapped itself oh. and entwined itself in his brain. It was a parasite. It was not a tumor. Isn't that crazy? Oh, Exactly. Oh God, yeah. And he went on to live another 25 years. They, 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 they thought he would not survive the brain surgery. He survived. They, they took the parasite out of his brain. Parasite. Wow. A living parasite sucking off of the blood of his brain. So mm -hmm. I believe that God, 4,000 years ago, okay, 3,500 years ago, he gave the kosher laws to, um, to Moses. And, and, I, and it was to sustain us for good health. Just yesterday, I'm in the store, okay? You know, Passover's coming, right? I'm mm -hmm. in the store, uh, or the Feast of Unleavened Bread, we're in that time. So here we have it. I look at it, and all you got to do is look for the kosher symbol, and then you know there's no GMOs in it because the Jews will not allow GMOs in their body. It is not kosher. It is not healthy. It is not good. It is not good for the next generation. It's not good for the seed to be passed down to the next generation. Mm -hmm. And so I think God cares about us eating healthy. I really do. It's important. And if we don't, what happens? We end up with the same stinking health problems that everybody else does. And then, hello, all that does is make billions of dollars more for the pharmaceutical companies. And the pharmaceutical companies are in bed with our government. Our government is always profiting off of sickness and disease. It's gross. It's disgusting. But we, the people, have to take our own lives into our own hands. And we have control over what we put in our mouth and what we put into our children's mouth. And I hope and pray that you are someone that's going to start taking it serious. Quit messing around with the future of your bloodline. Start taking it serious and quit depending on a miracle, but instead put miracles in your mouth of good, healthy food that's going to feed you. This is Danny Johnson. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. We're going to continue with more right after this. Hi, I'm Danny Johnson. The most common question I get usually are from people who are trying to juggle their life. They've got kids. They've got kids who are involved in all kinds of activities. They've got business or their job, finances, trying to get out of debt, plus all their church activities and all the volunteer activities. And they're pulling their hair out going, how do I juggle this all? Man, I once lived just like that until I learned Time Secrets. Time Secrets showed me how to be able to cut my hours from 100 hours a week that I was working down to 20 hours a week and tripled my income as a direct result with what I learned. Time Secrets also showed me how to get my priorities in order, which healed up my marriage. And I became a mother that I want now was proud of versus becoming the mother I didn't want to be. And so if you feel like your world is running around in all kinds of different circles, you can fix that. Call 888-757-8880. Again, 888-757-8880 for Time Secrets. Change your habits, change your future. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Kosher, Danny? You're saying we should eat kosher? I didn't totally say that. <laughs> but I am kind of leading in that direction. And I'm talking biblical kosher. I'm not talking about all the other, 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 other kosher. I'm saying like straight out of the Bible, God told us what to eat. He said, don't cook a goat in its mother's milk. Don't cook a baby goat in its mother's milk. I'm sure it has to do with digestion and it probably has something to do with, that's kind of mean. You know what I mean? You have a baby goat and you're cooking in its own mother's milk. That's kind of mean, but I'm pretty sure it has to do with digestion. Okay, don't eat pigs. I don't think that was like, don't eat pigs. Just stay away from that wonderful tasting meat. It had everything to do with pigs. Meat has parasites in it and people die from parasites. They do, they do. <laughs> you and I can talk about this again and again. And guess what? We're going to talk about this again. We really are. We live in a society that has told us that success is sacrificing our health and our family and our fun in order to get lots of stuff. That is not success. As Ralph Waldo Emerson said, the first 
health, sorry, the first wealth is health. That is so true. And without health, you will not accumulate wealth. You can't. You can't think straight when you got bugs floating around in your blood and in your intestines and around your heart. Ew. Time to do a parasite cleanse. <laughs> Which, by the way, I've been doing every quarter since 1996. I've been cleansing my body, my blood, my colon, and ridding my body of parasites every quarter. Why? Because we pick them up and my husband doesn't cleanse and I get his when he kisses me. I still like him to kiss me though. <laughs> He's doing his first cleanse right now. <laughs> I'm hoping. 19 years it's taken, but hopefully he's going to come on over to the anti-parasitical anti living side. Anyway, uh, hey, I hope you enjoyed today's show. Uh, you know what? There's something that you and I can do. You know, thank God we have options to good food. Thank God we have options to non-GMO food and we have options to research. But do you know what? There's cultures around the world that they don't have options for that. They don't have the internet. They don't have water. They don't have food. They don't even have a home. People like Pablo. Could you imagine being a man living so very poor and working as hard as he possibly can, but yet not being able to put food on the table every day and not even having a sufficient home for his family? Well, we're going to be putting Pablo in business. We're actually going to be helping him build a business right from his home. He's also going to be having an opportunity to have fresh, clean water that he could even sell if necessary and a brand new home that we're building for him in a safe environment for he and his family. We're going to break the cycle of poverty for him. You can help become a hero in Pablo's life. Go to kingsransom.org. Again, that's kingsransom.org. And do what you can. Rather than spending five bucks on that McDonald's cheeseburger today, back up. Don't spend it. Go give that amount to kingsransom.org. And let's help Pablo, who lives in extreme poverty, provide for his family for generations to come by helping him be in business that will sustain him with food for the rest of his life, water, and a brand new home. You can be a great hero today by simply not buying the Big Mac and going to kingsransom.org. Santa Pancha, Nicaragua is the project. Click there. Give what you can. We hope to see you tomorrow for another exciting show with Danny Johnson. God bless you. This has been the Danny Johnson Show. If you want to hear more, visit us at dannyjohnson.com. The whole story of how I went from homeless to millions is right here in this book, First Steps to Wealth. I'd love to give you a free copy of this book. Just dial 888-757-8880. You can get your free copy of this book. It's like a real book, my friend. You can get an ebook copy for free right now, or if you'd like to pay the shipping to get this $15 book to your house, I'd be happy to send it to you. 888-757-8880. Get your copy of First Steps to Wealth today and begin on a brand new path of some great success.